Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shauna Randolph, Edmonton Humane Society spokesperson, and welcome to our March 2012 Edmonton Humane Society's podcast, coming to you thanks to Fuse Logic TV. And this month, we're doing the show from our shelter, as you can see, something we don't normally do, but we're able to this month. And it's super because it's all in light of National Adopt a Pet Month. You see, we're in our beautiful adoption gallery. Behind us is where we keep our small animals. We'll talk a little bit soon about some cat adoption programs that some people may not know about. And of course those give some special cats a second chance that's coming up also ahead this half hour protecting puppies against a potentially deadly disease parvo which is common in the spring what exactly is parvo and what can you do to protect your pups against it also coming up a wonderful reunion between esperanza the dog and jacob the kitten with our staff members this beloved adopted doer touches people's hearts all the time we will definitely show you that and enjoy that but first breed specific legislation the City of Edmonton is now reconsidering its bylaw, which labels certain breeds as being dangerous. This is going before a City of Edmonton committee on March the 19th. We were asked to give our views on this, and we certainly did, since we are strongly against the legislation. And instead, we hope for a new bylaw that focuses on any dangerous dog based on their individuality, not their breed. Shaw Television recently covered this in a story, gave us permission to run it for you. Here it is now, and it clearly reflects our view and why. It's another day in the doggy classroom for these pit bull owners and their furry friends. Today's lesson is all about correcting unwanted behavior. Something all dog owners should be able to do, says behavior specialist Belinda Wagner. You've got to be responsible for the dog you own, make sure they're well trained, make sure you educate people about the breed of dog, and if they're a dog that maybe has fear issues, you've got to definitely seek some behavior advice from a behaviorist or a behavior specialist. It's a message that's not breed specific, but what is, is the City of Edmonton's Animal Control Bylaw, which labels Staffordshire Bull Terriers, American Staffordshire Terriers and Pit Bulls as restricted dogs. It was put into place in 1987. Uh, it was put in place, uh, I think, at that point in time after a fairly major uh, attacks on some people, uh, and that was put into place by council at that time. It was revisited again in 2002, 2003 to see whether it was an appropriate uh, piece of legislation. There was no change in the bylaw at that point. But now, after a request from council, there's another opportunity to review the legislation. Edmonton is currently the only community in the capital region to have such bylaws, and agencies like the Edmonton Humane Society believes it's time to make revisions. We would support more of something called a responsible pet bylaw, which is breed neutral, which basically labels a dog as aggressive that is an aggressive dog, instead of labeling just because of its particular breed. According to Randolph, research the agency has conducted shows that overall, breed-specific legislation is not effective. It does not eliminate the breed from existing in the community. If anything, it serves as a way to disconnect owners of labeled breeds from society. In many cases, people are scared then to take this animal into the community and take them to behavior training classes. And it is so important for every dog to have that training, that socialization. So overall, that could be affecting behavior of a dog that could be prevented. The city says it's currently doing its own research and will table a report not only on the options for a bylaw change, but also information on trends across Canada. It's timely that um, we're, we're looking at it. I mean, uh, we've got a lot more information relative to uh, dog attacks and the types of breeds and whether it's specific to one breed or just general uh, irresponsible pet ownership. Hopefully we've uh, gathered some good information across Canada that can uh, give council the information they need to make a decision. Until then, Belinda Wagner hopes to see more and more restrictive dog owners heading to class. This is the only pit bull training session currently available in Canada. Angelika Gavronsky, Shaw TV, Capital Region. 
That topic has been front and center in light of a few dog bite incidents in the news over the past month, and so has the request for help preventing dog bites from any kind of dog. We've produced this next video to help people have a great chance of having a well-adjusted dog and how to prevent dog bites in general among kids or anybody. Here's that for you now. Belinda, people need to understand that as much as an animal is a beloved part of the family, it is an animal. It is, and animals can seem unpredictable if you don't know their triggers and don't recognize or understand dog body language. You know, you need to really know the breed of dog you have, how much socialization they've had with kids, with strange objects, with other dogs, very important, how well they're exercised. Dogs, they have teeth for a reason and they have a very good communication system so that they don't use the teeth all the time. So an important thing to note about dogs is they live under pressure constantly. So if you have trained them using pain-induced methods or severe aversives, their behavior will change or get worse based on the fact that they're starting to not trust you out of fear. So if you have trained them using pain-induced methods or severe aversives, their behavior will change or get worse based on the fact that they're starting to not trust you out of fear. Dogs do give signals, it's scientific proof on that. So um, they might do some lip licking, they might do some yawning in context, so they're not tired. They're just all of a sudden in a situation they feel like they need to yawn. And that's that whole release of the adrenaline and the oxygen and all that. The same thing we do when we're tired. Um, they might do a shake off as a stress signal. So if you look at Matilda right now, she's relaxing. We've kind of gotten her attention and we're staring at her and she's, really shortening her breathing and she's decided to look away. So a direct stare to a dog is considered a threat, which is why lots of children get bit in the face. So they run straight up to the dog, usually with their limbs and their excitement, and the dog goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. They freeze, they sometimes try to retreat. If they're on a leash, it's worrisome for them. So the only thing they can do is try to get that child away. You have got to teach your kids how to approach animals because sometimes when animals are in our house, kids think that all animals are good. You know, kids and dogs, families and dogs, dogs hate change. So if ever there's a new child in the house, new baby comes home, all of a sudden there's new smells. Remember the dog's sense of smell is their most important sense, strongest sense. So all of a sudden you've got diapers and baby powder and a new scent in the house and that will stress the dog out. So knowing your risk factors is number one. Mm -hmm. Making sure that if your dog has a propensity to tear apart squeaky toys, when you have a kid's birthday party and there's a bunch of kids screaming, it might excite the dog. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's gonna tear them apart, but you need to be aware of that. Dogs, you know, we can't always supervise them in kids. Similar to when your child says, I'm gonna go outside mom and they trip on the stairs and break their jaw. Well, we're not gonna get rid of all the stairs. It, accidents do happen but really making sure your dogs have the five basic commands, sit down, wait, come and watch. Those commands can help you through a variety of things. I can't tell you how many parents just let their kids run up to my dogs. Right. And Matilda's a great dog, you know, she's, she's got her issues, but she's Greyhound and Doberman, so she's got some protectiveness about her. And um, teach children that large dogs and small dogs, it doesn't matter the size of their jaw, it does in, in relation to the bite, but small dogs can do just as much damage to a small face as a large dog to a big face. So the bottom line is there's five main things that you tell people in regards to animals in general and the safety. Definitely, so number one, if you get a puppy, that's the time to start training immediately. You're gonna have this dog for 12 to 14 years, maybe longer, and you wanna put the time in, teach them bite inhibition, teach them play with other dogs, teach them how to approach all kinds of people and objects, and teach them using non-aversive methods, not using punishment. You really want to make sure that all the family works with the dog, so they're all doing the training commands. We don't need one person teaching them a bad behavior, like rewarding them when they jump up, and then the rest of the family doesn't. Dogs need consistency. Um, make sure you know that they read your gestures very closely. So if you are giggling when the dog is jumping up on a child, the dog sees that as a good thing because normally we, we giggle or smile when they do something right. So know that they read very carefully and they learn things through that. Make sure with our high quality foods now, it gives the dogs lots of proteins and energy. So make sure you're exercising them appropriately so they don't get excited and need to do something with the excitement to get those little teeth going, you and know? cats too. Cats, absolutely. I get lots of calls about cats who are very tactile and need to play and they're not getting enough enrichment and exercise. They will go ahead and bite 
bite a human eventually. And definitely seek professional help. There are ways you can keep your dog safe while it's learning. Dogs can learn at any age, providing their mental capacity is still with them. Um, you may need to use crates, which are a very good thing for dogs. Muzzles, it's just a tool to help them feel safe and help you feel calm. And just get really good professional help. And at the Edmonton Humane Society, with the Training Academy, we offer that regularly, all types of different kind of classes. We do. We have private sessions, and we have private session packages, so you can do one to five lessons. We have group classes, if your dog is appropriate in a group class, and we invite the whole family to come. We don't say just one person can come. We want the whole family to come so they learn to be consistent. We have our free behavior hotline. We have handout sheets on the website. We will do everything imaginable to help you learn and keep your dog for life. And the number to call to sign up for classes. 780-491-3888. And you can check our website under behavior and training. Thank you, Belinda. You're welcome. And now is part of our monthly success story section, a reunion visit we recently had with Esperanza the dog and Jacob the kitten, our internationally recognized adopted pair that made news back in 2010. That was when Esperanza was found as a stray with a broken leg in the winter, and while in severe pain, was only focused on keeping her litter of tiny puppies and Jacob the kitten alive. Anyway, here is a chat I had with their adoptive mom, Amber, about how they're all doing now. We're so thankful you brought them in. Thanks. How was it seeing the staff react to her? Oh, Both it, of them. it's great. I, I, I've always been amazed at how Esperanza has been through so much. And every time she comes here, she's just so happy to be here. She's so happy. You guys have done such a good job. Great care. Because every time we come back, she's wagging her tail. I don't have to force her in. Like, you know, it's not like a, vi a visit to the dentist at all. Yeah. She's glad to see all the staff. And everybody always remembers her and their story. And that's, that's quite nice. And she even gives the veterinarian kisses. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that says a lot, I think. Yeah, for sure. And Jacob is pretty calm. Yeah, as long as uh, Jake's with Ezzy, he's always happy. Yeah. He's a good guy, yeah. He's a great cat. He um, He's not, you know, skittish. And he's usually, as long as he can see his mom, knows where his mom is, he's pretty calm. Right. What a journey. It's been more than a year. Just up and down, we were worried about her health a few times, not just with her leg, but yeah. some issues, allergies, that sort yeah. of thing too. Yeah, we had some food allergy issues. Uh, she ended up, um, she got a, a sore underneath her neck, which was caused from the allergies, and then it got infected, and she had to have a few surgeries to take that down. Um, it was Guardian Vet that did that, Dr. Sarita, and he did a great job. And have to thank him because uh, we almost lost Izzy at that point. Yeah. And oh, after yeah. everything that we'd been through, we were really fighting to keep her. And a lot of people didn't know about that. That was after um, the adoption, you know, the yeah. whole bit about bringing her home and we thought everything was great with the leg. So a few people know there were major medical issues with her even after that. Yeah. You know, it was when I went to the specialist in Calgary and talked, she said it was kind of, uh, Esperanza had sent us on a little bit of a goose chase to find us. And the way that it was presented wasn't classic. So it was not a surprise that it was missed so many times. And a, a lot of the sores that she had, I actually thought they were from Jake playing with her and being oh. rough, like little cat scratches. I didn't realize that they were from food allergies. Wow. Yeah. And now she, you can't even tell what she has gone through. She looks so happy, so healthy. Yeah, she has a great fur coat. She has no scars that you can see. And uh, yeah, she is, she's great. She's happy all the time. You, she's not scared to go to the vet. She's not scared to see new, new people, new dogs, anything. Yeah, she's a remarkable dog. Yeah, and then of course, because of what she's gone through and everything, Jake so well socialized and as you said, just bonded. And oh, it's such a wonderful story. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they really adjusted to each other. I'm very glad that we got them. We, we feel blessed to have them in our family. And uh, I, I know that there's a definite connection between these two. And it's wonderful that you adopted them, but as a foster parent as well, we can't thank you enough for what you did with them, but others that you fostered. Oh, yeah. Well, it, you know, it's been a pleasure. We had a guinea pig, and Esperanza really loved the guinea pig, and we've had a few kittens, and Jake's gets right in there with the kittens and cleans them. And, yeah, it, it, it's, it's nice. Yeah, and, it, and we enjoy it. It's nice having pets at our house. Well, and a part of your family. Oh, for sure it is. Yeah. And it doesn't stop here. I mean, yes, this part of it, but the fact that they now, as you mentioned, help with your fostering, they're going to be connected to us for as long as you are. Yeah, okay. Well, that's great. I know. I think so, too. Like, we had kittens, and I remember when they first came to us, they were so little, and, and they could barely clean themselves. And Jake would lay down in the kitchen floor, and he would hold them onto the mat, and he would clean and clean and clean them. And by the time I brought them back here, those kittens were cleaning themselves. Wow. 
so you know he, he yep. taught them that it makes a difference thank yeah, you very much no problem thank you always a favorite to hear from that family we love it stick around we're going to take a short break coming up a new way to donate online and a new way that businesses can contribute and help promote their cause as well stay with us so i just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing the little one he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box i don't know what he's doing i mean i was born and i knew how to use the litter box look at that that's disgusting oh poop already you're making me nervous oh okay i can't look at this anymore i really hope he grows out of this for his sake know what what since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look. I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look. They're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Welcome back. It's crucial to always be aware of dangers in the spring, especially if you have a young animal. One that seems to be more common in the springtime is called parvo. It's a disease that's often deadly in puppies in particular. I spoke recently with our Director of Veterinary Services about just how serious this is, how easily it is to prevent, and how it affects our shelter every year. Dr. Lang, this is an issue we see every year. Yes, it is. It seems to come up on a repetitive basis, that's for sure. And usually in the spring, more so? We start seeing it again more in the spring. It certainly can show up at any time of the year, but we have a tendency to see it more in the spring for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that as the snow usually starts disappearing about now, uh, the anything that's underneath the snow is exposed more. So, uh, and the puppies are getting out more because it's getting a little nicer weather usually, and so they're more likely to come into contact with this. Let's start really what is parvo? A lot of people don't really realize what it is and then we'll get into the bit how the ground kind of plays a factor in the spread of it. Parvo is caused by a virus and the virus attacks all the rapidly growing cells in the body. In puppies usually that means that it's attacking the intestines because that's where cells are getting replaced on a daily basis. Mm. So what happens is it destroys the cells that line the intestine so the puppy can't absorb anything from uh, from the food that's going down and usually they also end up losing a, a lot of fluids and blood uh, through the intestines because the, the barrier is gone. So it's really more serious in puppies for the most case than older dogs. Yeah. It certainly can be very serious in older dogs as well, but most older dogs have been exposed to to parvo as the vaccine or in some level uh, in the past uh, even the, the live virus and it, if it wasn't sufficient enough to make them ill or if they'd survived it or if it was uh, the virus that was being passed actually by other dogs that were vaccinated, uh, then they actually get their immunization that way sometimes. How is it transmitted? It basically goes into any of the bodily fluids that the, the sick animal passes. So any, any feces is there, if they vomit you can have it there, but primarily it's from, from the stools. And then it stays dormant over the winter and then in the spring as it warms up, then it's kind of reactivated and then you have a puppy, for example, come through who isn't vaccinated and then there's trouble. Right. It's not that the virus is really dormant and such, it's just basically buried. Okay. So uh, if you happen to dig down under the snow and had your puppy exposed to it there, he could still get sick in the winter. Okay. But it, it's more exposed in the summer. All right. And so anyone who has a puppy and is watching this, what do they do? You really need to be careful with your puppy, where it goes and who it sees until it gets vaccinated and even after that until those vaccines have had a chance to do their work. So certainly you don't take your puppy out to the dog park uh, before it's had its vaccines and before it's fully up to date on the vaccine. So you make sure that you talk with your veterinarian about, uh, about what series of vaccinations you need to get that puppy protected. And then here we really see the after effects if someone hasn't gone that route and hasn't been safe we see the poor animals come in with it. Yes, they, we quite often get animals brought in by their owners because they are now suddenly very sick and the owner is faced with uh, several thousand dollars in veterinary bills to try and bring this puppy through. And if they're not able to afford it, then they just surrender it into our care? And A lot of puppies are euthanized at veterinary clinics and some of them end up here mm -hmm. instead. So prevention is the key. That's right. Thank you.
And now, easy donations to help our animals at the click of a mouse, and in quite a fun way, actually. If you haven't checked out our Positively Perfect online giving catalog, you really should. It's very popular, and we hope something else new will really interest businesses wanting to promote what they do and help our animals at the same time. More now in this chat I had recently with our manager of fund development, Jocelyn Brulat. Jocelyn, we're looking at two computer screens here, basically new ways that people can access online to support. Let's start with the general public first. Sure, we've got our um, Positively Perfect Gifts. Um, this is a symbolic gift catalog that we actually launched just before Christmas. Um, and it's a, it's a way that people can give and feel like they're choosing specific items to help the animals. So it's, it is a cash donation. Um, it is tax deductible. And the great thing about it is that people can choose uh, different cards to send to recipients in honor of special occasions that they're celebrating, like birthdays, weddings, uh, you name it, you can celebrate it this way. We promoted it really heavily during Valentine's Day, yeah. um, and we did get a great response from that. It did bring in a couple thousand dollars for the shelter animals and uh, let some loved ones know that people People were thinking of them on Valentine's Day. And it's very easy to use, isn't it? It is very easy. It's all one simple transaction and uh, the cards can be either uh, printed off and given to the recipient, e sent as an e-card, or you can request that we send a printed card on your prep on your behalf. Um, the payment is in the same transaction and as soon as your payment's done you get a, a tax receipt email to your email address so it's all very simple. Yeah you don't have to wait there's a lot of times if you support an organization you have to wait for them to mail it out. Sure sure so receipt processing can take some time the great thing about doing it through this online system is that it's fully automated and the rest of our online donations should be that way very soon too. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about corporations, businesses and the new bit, new adoption package sponsor. Yes, we wanted to offer people a way, um, businesses a way to support the shelter and actually support our adopters a little bit at the same time. Um, a lot of businesses have recognized that our adopters make a really good um, market for their products and um, we wanted to get some benefit for the shelter animals at the same time. So we're launching a new adoption package sponsorship program. There's different levels to the program. It's, it's pretty comprehensive. Basically what's going to happen is that um, sponsors will come on for a period of time. They're logo will be recognized right on the adoption package and they have opportunity to provide inserts with a benefit to our adopters in the adoption packages themselves so a coupon for maybe a discount of their product or hmm. or whatever so we've got a couple of um, sponsors interested already we're hoping to launch this program for April 1st it might be a little bit later than that but we're very excited to see this unroll oh and I know people have been really wanting to know can I put this and this in your adoption package for sure and it's more than 7,000 adopted last year that's animals right from us, so it, it does hit a lot of people People. It absolutely does, and um, the great thing about it is for the for the businesses that they know that they're providing something for our animals and something for the the adopters as well, and getting some people into their store. So it's a really win-win situation for everybody. And I love the different packages: leader of the pack, top dog, cool cat, fuzzy friend. That's really good. That's right. And there's like I said, there's a, a, options for for companies of different sizes. We do have a a couple of sponsors committed already, but there's still some spots available if people are interested in coming on. So if it's something that uh, you know you're you're trying to promote a business, it might be a good option for you. And the bottom line with all of this is that it helps us save lives. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. We're going to take a short break again. Coming up though, the hottest new items at Bingo's Pet Shop, which is right here inside our shelter, including some great specials on right now in light of Adopt a Pet Month. We'll be right back. He's had his weekly bath and now he's looking good. And he's cruising the neighborhood. He's strutting his stuff and he's looking tough. But he's not looking for a fight, he's looking for some love. He knows that somewhere down the street there's a girl dog waiting there in heat. He can hear her howling with desire. Now he's jumping the fence to put out the fire. Why don't you neuter that? So many homeless, helpless animals in the world Do something good for society Take home a dog or cat to your family And neuter that boy And spay that girl They are God's creatures and that's the truth They're not put here to be abused 
dogs and cats and like me and you Sometimes they need a little love too In all the shelters throughout the land People are doing the best that they can To find the animals a loving home And a family that they can call their own To all the rescuers let me say Thanks for your kind unselfish ways God's gonna bless you for all you do And if the animals can talk, they thank you too Why don't you neuter that boy? Why don't you spare that girl? There's so many homies, homies animals in the world Do something good for society Take home a dog or cat to your family And neuter that boy Spay that girl Oh, neuter that boy Spay that girl And now, as the country marks Adopt-A-Pet Month, we thought that we'd fill you in on some cat adoption programs that give felines a second chance if others may not find them adoptable. First, to our Barn Buddies program, where we match people wanting a good mouser with cats that may have a litter box issue or be a bit too timid for some people. These cats make great pets as a cat in charge in a barn or a shop or wherever someone has a mousing issue. The adoption fee is waived, but you need to commit to feeding the cat once a day, providing it with adequate shelter and regular veterinary care. And then to our Senior for a Senior program. This is where senior humans, well, 60 years and older, can adopt a senior cat six years and older with the adoption fee waived. It's a great value since, of course, all of our felines are spayed or neutered before being adopted, so no extra cost there at all. For more information about any adoption program, just visit us online, our website, EdmontonHumaneSociety.com. Every month, we check in with our shelter store, Bingo's Pet Shop, to keep you connected and show you the new trendy pet care items. We take you each month directly into the store and our bingo expert is the store supervisor, Nadine Johnson. Let's show you the cool new items showcased this month as we mark Adopt-A-Pet Month. Incentives with adoptions and much more. Nadine, it's Adopt-A-Pet Month and you have wonderful specials to celebrate. Absolutely, for your dog adoption, we've got uh, the rollover, the crunchies and the tummy dog wells and the breathy dog wells are going to be buy one get one free for the dog lovers and then for the cat adoptions we got all the cat collars kittens as well they're 20 percent off okay and even with not adopting although that is a good incentive you still have specials all month yeah absolutely we got a window special right now where you have to guess the tennis balls in the window so for that we're hoping spring comes soon so we got the, the whippets are on for 30 percent off and if you put a small donation in for guessing on the window, you have a chance to win a beautiful Whippet. This is a high quality bamboo Whippet. Okay, that's nice. What other specials? Uh, we got uh, a kind of a 333 thing going on here. So get a, a Lupin keychain, which is guaranteed even if it gets chewed. Very good line. It comes with leashes and collars as well if you want to go that way. A greeting card and with the purchase of these two items you get a free leash or collar of your choice. And these are really good quality. Why do you have so many of them? Oh, they just were slow sellers and we decided this is another way to get rid of them just to get them out of the store. Okay, so come here for those. Yeah, uh, shirts. We have beautiful new shirts on to help the public know about the Edmonton Humane Society. Yeah, so we wanted to go with something fun this time. So we're now, instead of just our logo, because I have the logo on here, uh, we got the word cloud. And we got two different word clouds. We got the gray word cloud or the black one that I'm wearing here and in different colors and sizes and styles. I love it. Yeah, Edmonton Humane Society, home, love, companion, animals, community. Yeah, it, it sure certainly tells a story, hey? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right, and please remind all of our viewers about proceeds with bingos coming here. 
Yes, everything that we, uh, you guys spend in the store goes directly back to the shelter. There's no uh, person making money. It's all towards the shelter. And Absolutely. located right inside the main doors here at the Edmonton Humane Society near the adoption desk. Yep, so please come support us. Thanks, Nadine. Thank you. So we're at the end of our March 2012 show from our beautiful Edmonton shelter. Thank you very much for watching. Coming up on next month's show, all about a new therapy being tried out here in our shelter on puppies. Early neurological stimulation, it's called. It helps improve heart rates and helps pups be able to deal with stresses in any environment. This helps develop a well-rounded dog when they grow up. Then, meet the head of our fantastic maintenance department. He's in charge of keeping our huge facility running smoothly from cleaning to upkeep to always building great new features. Here's a look at Barry Morgan's new shelves he put in our Vingles pet shop recently, for example. He's extremely handy and loves his job. He often gets to be creative like building this new cat activity center in our feline socialization room. You'll hear from Barry about why he loves it here so much and how his work really does make a difference to our animals. And that's it for this month. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Fuse Logic TV, as usual, for donating the airtime and production for us to bring you this show each month. Mark your calendars. The next one is set for Monday, April 16th at noon. Thank you again, and take care.